Hey my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we have some new details for Obi-Wan Kenobi and we're also going to be talking about the Mandalorian universe. As always my dear friends before we dive into the news please be sure to hit that big red subscribe button if you've not done so and why not give that bell a good old tickle to be alerted every time that I post a new video. We've reached 100,000 subscribers thank you all so much now let's move to our next goal of 200k and beyond. But without much further ado and without any more jibber jabber let's talk about Obi-Wan. We have a huge update for the Kenobi series, making Star Wars have leaked some more details of the plot, as well as revealing a new character who's going to play a major role. So last time I covered the info surrounding Luke and Leia, and also the tension between Uncle Owen and Obi-Wan. Well in the latest report, my dear friends, making Star Wars say the following. Tensions between Star Wars' favourite uncle and our hero have never been worse. Uncle Owen is seething about Obi-Wan Kenobi's proximity to Luke Skywalker. Kenobi is hated for doing his job of watching over the boy. His life is hard enough, but in some ways, his position as defender of Luke Skywalker is even harder. And none of this is even Obi-Wan's fault, and they kind of tease a sense of sympathy, which inevitably we were going to feel nonetheless. So they then go on to explain the role of the Inquisitors and how they're actually not after Obi-Wan. At least, not at first. In their own words they write, the assumption is the Inquisitors are hunting Obi-Wan Kenobi. Over the last year my sources have informed me that this assumption is incorrect. Kenobi is a pro at sneaking around and not being caught. These chowder heads, and he's referring to the Inquisitors, could never find Kenobi, even if he was trying not to be found, so the Inquisitors are hunting surviving Jedi, but not specifically looking for Obi-Wan. They say Obi-Wan has spent a decade of his life after Order 66, keeping his head down. Every move he's made is calculated and the risks are weighed. Kenobi does not make a move that will draw any attention to himself or endanger Luke. However, and this is the big moment, their safety is shattered when a young Jedi straggler, a survivor of Order 66 whose name is Nari, finds his way to Tatooine. Nari is inspired by Obi-Wan's message from the Jedi Beacon and he's been on a decade-long quest of his own. He wants to find Obi-Wan, achieve refuge and restore the Jedi Order. Now, if you've seen Star Wars Rebels, then you'll know what the message of the Jedi Beacon says. We see Obi-Wan logging it in Episode 3 and it's as follows. This is Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. I regret to report that both our Jedi Order and the Republic have fallen, with the dark shadow of the Empire rising to take their place. This is a message of warning and a reminder for any surviving Jedi, trust in the Force. Do not return to the Temple. That time has passed and our future is uncertain. Avoid Coruscant. Avoid detection. Be secret but be strong. We will each be challenged our trust, our faith, our friendships, but we must persevere and in time, I believe a new hope will emerge. May the Force be with you always. So this is the message that inspired a young Jedi Nari to search for Kenobi. What Nari does not know is Obi-Wan has a secret mission bigger than anything Nari could ever dream of. And Obi-Wan does not want to be found. Without realizing it, Nari is jeopardizing Kenobi's mission. So then making Star Wars say that Nari arrives on Tatooine, but the Grand Inquisitor, the third sister and the fifth brother have tracked him down. And apparently there is some serious implication that they are aware of Nari's quest to reunite with Obi-Wan and restore the Jedi Order. And then on Tatooine, Reva, the third sister, apparently senses Obi-Wan Kenobi. The Grand Inquisitor berates her for thinking she could ever track down Kenobi when he himself could not. This apparently enrages Reva as they interrogate the life forms of Tatooine, trying to find the young Jedi Nari. Her patience is thin and she's maiming people who do not comply with her investigation. And if you guys remember, there was a recent report on this where Making Star Wars said that Raver is going to cut off the hands of any locals who don't comply. So some really dark and gruesome things in this show. Now they go on to say that Uncle Owen observes their brutality and his stomach drops. He thinks that Kenobi is making things worse for Luke and he needs to get the kid home to their farm before he's discovered. And then when Obi-Wan tries to make contact with Luke and give him a gift, Owen is furious. Making Star Wars writes that this premise has some great story potential. You see, the thing is, Nari's presence on Tatooine is really smart. This survivor of Order 66 creates a situation where Obi-Wan remaining on Tatooine is putting Luke in danger. Leaving for some time is the better option. And interestingly enough, 
Reva senses both Nari and Kenobi, but the other Inquisitors do not. So in a big way, Nari is incidentally acting as cover for Luke and Obi-Wan. Nari has no idea this is the case and has no clue what he's walking into. When Bail asks Obi-Wan to leave Tatooine on a mission, Kenobi realizes there is an advantage to leaving Luke's proximity. By leaving the world, he's protecting young Skywalker. Leia is as important as Luke, and it will pull the Inquisitors off-world. The advantages of leaving far outweigh the risk of staying, and this is likely the mindset that Deborah Chow had with this show. In my opinion, it's an awesome premise, and I love the darkness that comes along with it. Doing justice to fans of the prequels and Star Wars Rebels, while also giving us new Force users like Nari, and of course, the third sister. And I must wonder if the survivors of Order 66 are a big part of this show. Could there be any room to have some overlap with the Grogu flashback from the Book of Boba Fett, and what happens to him afterwards? There is a big period of time between Kenobi and the Mandalorian, and it would be interesting if any reference to Grogu or other surviving younglings and Padawans comes up. Maybe we'll find out where he was taken. Or perhaps Nari has answers, because he himself was a young survivor of the Purge, which at this point took place 10 years prior. Or you know what? They might altogether avoid Grogu and save the remainder of the flashback and subsequent story for another flashback in The Mandalorian Season 3. Time will tell, but I'm loving the direction of this show, just based on these new details that have been emerging. And while some have said that it spoils it to know what happens in advance, I have two counter-arguments. First of all, it's always different on screen compared to on paper. And second of all, nothing major has been spoiled, just the setup and premise. Simply the positions of our protagonists and villains, but nothing about the later episodes or substantial general plot. In a way, it's reassuring. And I have a lot of faith in this show compared to others. The fact that Deborah Chow directed all six episodes instantly gives a sense of consistency with the story, which I think we can all agree is very much needed. And with Ewan McGregor praising the writing on the show, as well as having been a producer, just adds to the show being in the best hands. And I'm gonna say this right now, Deborah Chow does not get enough credit. As the director of two of the best episodes of season one of The Mandalorian, I am more than confident that she's going to deliver. And as a fan who roots for Star Wars and the success of Star Wars, I really hope we'll have a Bryce Dallas Howard situation where we're all calling for Deborah Chow to direct a trilogy of movies. I just want this show to be incredible, whichever direction it takes. It really is the biggest Star Wars series of the year and I keep my fingers crossed that it's going to do justice to the characters and the galaxy at this point in the timeline. It's been so great hearing all of these leaks and the fact that Liam Neeson is back as Qui-Gon and possibly Ian McDermott as Palpatine, and so things are definitely looking up. And so finally, my dear friends, just a quick update for the Mandalorian universe. Lucasfilm are starting to piece everything together because the most recent promo for Disney Plus and the Book of Boba Fett includes a prelude of the Mandalorian seasons one and two. The Mandalorian universe or the Favroniverse, whatever you want to call it, is an expansive, ever-growing story. And in a few years time, I'm sure we're going to have an endgame style event that's probably going to take the shape of a movie and that will be the finale of the Mandalorian story. It'll probably incorporate all of the Mandalorian Mandoverse, and that will include Boba Fett, Mando, Thrawn, the New Republic, and the Imperial Remnant. Really exciting stuff to look forward to. But otherwise, my dear friends, that brings us to the end of this Star Wars news update. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Give me a big fat thumbs up down below. But until the next one, have an amazing day no matter where you are. I'm Star Wars Meg. May the Force be with you, always.